today we are very pleased to have the, our the distinguished scholar, the Dr. Chen Guixian, to give, to give us a talk. And uh, Dr. Chen is a uh, graduate from the Taoi Department of uh, NT in our university. And after that, he went to the Harvard University to complete his PhD degree in applied science. And then he worked in the General Electric uh, for about one year. And then he came back to the Academia Seneca. Um, and uh, right now, he is a distinguished research fellow and uh, academic deputy director of the Institute of Atom Atomic and Molecular Science. Uh, so the, the, he, he, after he, uh, he come back, he is, uh, his uh, research work is doing very well, and he is well known in, uh, in the world. Uh, for example, uh, he has published more than whole hundred paper and the uh, whole uh, 12 patent with more than uh, 10,000 citations. Uh, to, uh, this number is quite, uh, quite, uh, quite unusual. We say index of, uh, actually index of 52. You know this, um, the, some people say, in, in terms of the H index, a typical professor in a typical university, as a pro full professor, the H index is around 17, okay? So right now he got uh, 52, so he, uh, so 52 we saw more than 10,000 citations, which means that he's a well, uh -huh. Is the leading in the world in, in the world in his field, and then his ex expertise is in the advanced material, especially in the energy application. And uh, today, he will talk uh, talk to us about uh, some more electric uh, material. Uh, please join me welcome the Dr. Chen. Thanks, Professor uh, Yongbang Chen, for the kind introduction. But well, I feel privileged and also pleasure to give a talk in this department. Um, history go back uh, when I was uh, the first year undergrad. Actually, I was a student in the Department of Physics. Uh, after one year, the second year, I was uh, well run away to double E. <laughs> Probably to avoid this uh, the, the, the huge challenge uh, in this uh, uh, department, but uh, anyhow, I I went to Harvard as in the department of applied physics. But after I came back here, I'm uh, in, under our uh, National Science Council. I'm in the chemistry division. So, so I'm ranging from physics to uh, double E to chemistry. Uh, let me uh, start. I'm sorry, the, the contract is not very high. So uh, the title of the talk is uh, on uh, thermal electric material. Uh, of course, we are talking about next generation. And uh, I'm uh, currently uh, associated with uh, IMS in the Chemistry Also joint appointment with uh, CCMS uh, in National Taiwan University, which is also in this building. Um, the outline of the talk, I will give a little bit of a history and background and talk about what the current status. And the research focus of our team uh, and also will cover what is uh, hot in this uh, area and then a little bit of uh, perspective. Okay, the history go back to about 200 years back, okay? Uh, when uh, Seabat, in 1821, he discovered a so-called Seabat effect. At that time, well, he put, it's uh, only one piece of uh, metal uh, 
in between a hot and cold uh, reservoir, uh, uh, temperature gradient. And he detected some kind of uh, uh, <coughs> magnetic field. Okay? At, at that time, he thought it's a magnetic effect. And after so many years, uh, people uh, find out that instead of magnetic effect, actually is a thermoelectric. That say you have a hot reservoir, you have a cold reservoir, and then you have a heat, a temperature gradient, so that you have a heat conduction from one end to the other end, and that will induce uh, electric potential or uh, electric current in between. And that was called Seebeck effect. And as a matter of fact, uh, 10, 13 years after, uh, Pettier, he discovered the other side, uh, the other side of the same phenomenon. Uh, that's called Pettier effect. Namely, if you uh, apply a voltage between the two ends of a material, and you can drive a current through it. And eventually, if this material is uh, so electric, you can uh, heat up one side or cool down the other side. You can create a temperature gradient in between. And that's called Pettier effect. And actually, uh, after so many years, people realize actually it's a the, set, the same phenomena of the two different uh, uh, aspects. Um, there's a, another person called uh, Thomson effect. Okay, well that is try to uh, connect between the two, and uh, there are uh, certain equation. I, I don't want to go to the detail. Um, that. Eventually, uh, in physics, people also know uh, this uh, uh, Osaka relation. Okay, he theoretically proved that the the two uh, they are connected. Okay, so but today I'm going to talk about uh, Seebeck or Pettier effect, what is called thermoelectric effect, and most of the device is like this. Why right? instead of one piece of uh, material is two. And why, what's the difference between the two? Well, we are talking about semiconductor, and if you have a p-type semiconductor and n-type semiconductor, and when you join the two together, you will maximize the thermal energy effect. I'm not going to go, well, this is quite simple mathematics. If you had only one piece, okay, so it's a p-type semiconductor, and then your carrier is positive. So the carrier will be driven by the thermal gradient from one end to the other end, okay? And likewise, the anti-material in your carrier is the electron. So the electron will be driven in the same direction, but this is, the carrier is the negative, the carrier is positive, so eventually you create the maximum uh, potential difference, and that's how most of the uh, thermoelectric material, they are built in pairs, okay? A positive and negative uh, material, uh, p-type and n-type material. So, uh, this is about 200 years ago, and people has been uh, trying to take advantage of this effect, and particularly uh, trying to go for energy. And here, this is a, 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 a diagram to show you that in an engine, what a heat engine, we're talking about a hot reservoir and cold reservoir, or in your car, you have an engine that every time you uh, explode, you uh, move, you push the, the, the engine to move around. But the energy come from, for example, a fuel, a gas, gasoline, okay? And when you burn it, actually nearly 70% of the energy go into heat, which is useless. And only about 30% of them go to whatever you want to drive a car 
for you to light up your, your light bulb, etc. And this is a really uh, a shock to me when I saw this. Um, because, for example, in a car, you know, not only you're going to drive it, right? You also need a, a, a radiator, a, a cooler, okay, to cool down the engine, which is the tech, in tech part of this. And so, if we can use the heat, the waste heat, to recover some of the heat, okay, we probably can, can do with our uh, a radiator, okay, a cooler. So in the past, uh, people has tried uh, this uh, thermal electric material is one of that which is uh, fit right into this need. So for example, BMW <coughs> has put one of the thermal electric converter into their car, and they found that they can reduce five to ten percent of the fuel, okay, which is uh, quite significant. And likewise, uh, General Motors put them into the truck and they found that their mileage, okay, the same uh, one gallon of uh, gasoline, they can run uh, three to four percent more mileage. So it took, it, it, it's proven that this is uh, effective. However, okay, they are very expensive. So even though uh, it's, it's five percent or ten percent better, but it's at what cost? Okay. If the if this is free for my car, I'm going to do it. Okay. If this is it's going to double your the price of your car. Forget about it. So that's a, a, a major issue. Uh, in the past, uh, people had tried uh, other applications as well. Some only electric devices. For example, this is a typical uh, like the, the schematic I show you. They, 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 are, they are in, in pair of a P-type and N-type thermal electric material, and you put them, put one end to the hot end and the other end to the cold end, and you can harvest the power out. For example, uh, if you go to the internet, you can buy a candle light like this. Well, you put a candle in there, but it gives you LED lighting, okay? So I say, why, why bother if I use a candle? It's much more romantic. <laughs> And the L LED lighting is so so boring, right? But well, it proved that it's, it, it it works. And also, for example, when you go out for camping, well, you might have a lot of candle, or you have a lot of uh, fireplace. But if you need your mobile phone to communicate, well, if probably run out of electricity, then this device will be really helpful, and sometimes can save your life, right? So it's proven that this is a, a useful device. But again, at what cost? Right? OK, this is a, well, so some how people. Much, how much does it cost? Well, this is a, a, a few hundred US dollars. Wow. How, how much? A hundred. A hundred. Yeah. Within a hundred US dollars. Well, US. Yeah. We can, we can uh, cost it down if we manufacture more, right? Uh, for example, people used to have, uh, in your car, you have a, a, a cooler for your uh, Pepsi, uh, Coca-Cola. Now, when you go camping, you, 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 you hope you can have a, a, a cooler with you all the time. But put a, put a cooler inside your car, well, it's a, it's a problem if you have a compressor. But you can buy a thermal electric cooler, which is really tiny, really small, and quiet, okay? Uh, that is on the market already, well, 20 years back, right? But sometimes you, you don't think you need it. For example, in at home, you have, everybody has a refrigerator. And who, who bother buy an expensive thermal electric uh, refrigerator, okay? Well, this, this is the picture I took uh, just uh, two weeks back when I went for a conference. Actually, there's a thermal electric conference in China. Okay, I, I, I stay in the hotel, and I open up the refrigerator, and lo and behold, it's a thermal electric refrigerator. It's amazing. Okay, why do you need that? Well, you need it sometimes. Uh, I have the 
experience that I go to a hotel and I try to get in my sleep in the evening, and I was wake up by that noisy refrigerator. And I have to wake up and then unplug the power so that I can stop the noise, so that I can sleep. Okay? I think uh, many of you probably have a similar experience. So, a quiet refrigerator really works. Okay? Uh, there are, for example, e tree, Gong uh, Gong Yin, they have uh, come up with a refrigerator for, uh, for wine. Okay? And I said, well, but how come you need a, 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 a thermal electric refrigerator for wine? Okay, well, it's much more expensive, right? So that fits better into the price of the wine, right? If you, if you are using a very cheap, uh, a few euros uh, per bottle of wine, why well, you just use a compressor, okay? <laughs> if you are uh, drinking a, a few hundred uh, euro per bottle, probably you can use a thermal electric uh, refrigerator that uh, feel, tastes much better, okay? Well, that's a, just a side story. Okay, so here shows that the thermal electric uh, effect can really be useful uh, in your daily life. And if you look into the efficiency for thermal electric, well, you have a hot reservoir, you have a cold reservoir, it's from thermal dynamic, you can easily, for example, this is efficiency and this is a tunnel cycle, okay? For thermal electric, it's this is more complicated. Now, you eventually, you look into this uh, equation. And in here, the Z T uh, is defined in here. It's called uh, a dimensionless a figure of mirror. And this is Z T is been used to judge how good uh, the thermal electric material is. And it contains a few parameters. This is the temperature in Kelvin. 